I wish we had more ways to like greet people. I know we should do like like a thing. Like people are like sup, like yeah. toodles or like TTY. Oh my god, toodles! Wait, what? Is, what is Sharpay? She does do toodles, Sharpay. Uh oh, what does she do? Toodles more like a bye thing. She's um, it's like, but she's like, um, oh, like nice talking to you. Like night, like we know, you know that scene where she has the mic. No, seriously, oh, so she has the mic and she's talking to Kelsey and she's walking away. She's on that stage, just like the glittery mic. And she's like, nice talking to you. Okay, but like her and Ryan's relationship on High School Musical always confused me. Is it us so though? So much. The question is, who's Ryan? Because I know it's gonna fucking be me. <laughs> me, no, girl. You're hundred percent Jarpe. Really? Yeah, I'm more of like the. Cause think about it, I'm more of the jazzy, like, oh my god, oh, theater, and you're more of like the. I didn't want attention. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're really, you're really, you're truly not wrong. Um, but I love how like when she comes to a place, they know like sparkly Mark, sparkly Mark. Sparkly Mike, I can't speak English. <laughs> Sparkly Mike, like lights, spotlight, let's go. Like yeah. they, like they have a routine in place. Yeah. Her locker was unique. Okay, you know how the lockers in Victorious were all like personally designed. So sick. I wish I had that. So for I never used my locker in high school because I didn't know the code to it. It was on a bottom locker, and the idea of having to put my face in between two sweaty boys who were on top of me made me want to. Because we were, like, in my school, I went to an all-girls private Catholic high school, and we were only allowed to decorate the outside of someone's locker if it was their birthdays. (gasps) Us too. And if we did it, other than that, we would have gotten a demerit. Like, we would have gotten really big trouble. The thing is, like, some people, like, when we were, like, freshmen or, like, eighth grade, people did decoration, like, all out for your friends. Yeah. But then, like, by the time you were, like, juniors or seniors in high school, the only girls who decorate their locker or, like, genuinely anyone were like the girls who are like the Jesus girls in our grade <laughs> because it would be like a boa feather. It'd be like it'd be like sparkles. They, they have like confetti Jesus magnets, like yeah, like Jesus confetti throwing out. And I was like, but like good for them because they were all of the artsy girls. So like it made sense that they would do that. And mm. like I was really kind of jealous. So I was like, I wish I had like a cute spark. And like cleaning it up is a lot, you know. So mm. I don't know. Anyway, that's nothing to do with what we're talking about today. I have some very exciting news to share. That I even told Sydney that I'm going to share with you as soon as the camera hit record because I'm so excited about it. I've been following this girl on YouTube. Her name is Bronwyn Wisemiller since, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, but anyway, I've been following her since I was like, literally a freshman in high school, um, following like her Disney channel like experience because she like, she literally has a Disney YouTube channel. It's all about Disney World. She was in the Disney college program. I want to do the Disney college program so bad, like you remember. Yeah, yeah. And I've been following her for so long and I slid up on one of her stories and she responded to me and I started crying at dinner. She basically cried and I was like, girly, let's get it together. <laughs> I think... <laughs> That's probably Sarah's, like, biggest guilty pleasure. Yeah. Or, like, the thing that I roast her the most about is that, like, it's, like, 9 o'clock on a Tuesday night. I want to watch a movie. I want to study together. We have a lot of the same classes. Yeah. I'll go into her room, and she'll be watching Disney vlogs. And not, like, vlogs of Disney stars, but, like, physically grown adults who go to <laughs> Disney every month and, like, record their experience. But, like, you've been, grew- you've been to Disney. Yeah. Then nothing's but- changed. <laughs> then nothing's changed. Like, you get a turkey leg, you wait in four hours in the line for Space Mountain, you get there, it's woo for two minutes, and you're done. Like, what could you possibly watch for days on end of the Do you want to anger me? First of all, I'm Galaxy's Edge just came about I mean, in, I that in Hollywood Studios. How do you know that? Is scary. <laughs> um... And second of all, Toy Story Land isn't, like, that new, but it's, like, new-ish to the point where, like, I want to hear more about it. And, but Galaxy's Edge, like, the, like the new Star Wars attractions in Hollywood Studios are... What's, is it the ride that interests you, or, like, the idea of going to Disney? Or, like, the culture? I don't know what's scarier. It's a lot of it, because here's the thing that I like to think about me, is, like, I'm not one of those Disney adults who, like, collect memorabilia and who, like, post on Tumblr and Twitter about Disney World. Like, it's not my entire life. Like, I don't have a Disney World channel. But, like, I don't know why or what it is, because I think, to its core, Disney Disney in general, like the Disney company, is like a capitalist black hole where like everything just falls in and like nothing ever comes back out. Why you liberal? (laughs) But also, I like love it so much that I can't even begin to describe it. So I think like it's the fascination with Disney in general, just like on its basis. But then also, it's like the fun rides, it's the fun culture, it's just like being a kid again. I think that's something that I can't let go of. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> on my list of fears in this world, especially in America, Disney adults, 
are definitely in the top five because they're so scary. <laughs> you already agreed to come with me. They, they, will, they will fight a four-year-old to get True. onto a ride, to get a, an angle. Okay. Right? Yeah. Literally. So, Sarah literally laughs like she either has bronchitis <laughs> about her vocal cords clipped like a dog. Keep that burning for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, oh my lord. <laughs> I don't know the mind of that noise. But anyway, what were we even talking you about? You should be like, Disney adults. Oh, yeah. So when I'm older, I told Sarah this at dinner and a million times before. When I am kids and they're like five and they're like, I'm going to Disney. I'm saying, Aunt Sarah, take them. <laughs> take it. Let's go. Meow. Ka-chow. <laughs> okay, anyway, this episode. So you guys sent in questions on Instagram about like two weeks ago. A week ago? Two when I, ago. There, was, there was a time where they were sent in. <laughs> and we were finally answering them. Probably gonna be a two part episode because we got a lot of responses, which is so amazing. We're excited. So, we're gonna answer the longer ones right now. We got over DMs. And then. Some of these are like novels. Like, some of these novels. are literally like YN Tumblr stories that I'm super, super excited to like dive into. Like, we're invested in them. We're like, invested. I want every. I'm gonna like literally DM everyone who like responds to this and be like, please give us an update because like I'm invested in your story now. Like, I wanna know what's happening. Exactly. Okay. So if you're listening to this and like, cause we're not going to name any names, but if you're listening to this and you're hearing your story, like maybe someday we'll do like, if you want to include your name, just mm-hmm. like yeah. tell us. But like for now, we're not going to include any names, but just listen. And if you hear your story, let us know. So yeah, someone's getting their anonymous, but we're going to read them out to you and like probably post them like the, the text, like right here so you can read along. Cause yeah. it's a long. Okay. So the first one, we'll read the story. I was looking up with a guy I met at work for a while. And after he ghosted me and came back for the millionth time, I said I was done with him. He now clearly has a girlfriend. And a few weeks ago, he started sporadically answering my stories. I'm assuming Instagram stories. Mind you, we never talked just because. We only talked to hook up because he's an asshole. So it's not like uh, he's just doing it because he wants to see me. He wants to see how I'm doing. The last time he talked to me, he was clearly flirting and saying I was sexy or whatever. So I told him that I don't want him to talk to me like that if he has a girlfriend because I don't want any trouble. I'm not interested anymore like at all. And he played it off as though there was nothing wrong with telling a girl you used to hook up with that she's sexy when you have a girlfriend. And he tried to make a casual conversation. What an asshole. (laughs) So the girl went along with the chat to not be like rude or avoid having any tension at work. But she wanted to be like fuck off. But obviously she avoided that. So... She's getting serious with the new guy that she's been dating, and but even responding to the old guy makes her feel like she's being shady with the new one. So she wants to know if you guys think, or if we think, she should tell this guy to like basically fuck off or put up with um, weird tension at work, or should she act polite towards him if he talks to her and just put up with him being flirty? So, what? do you have an answer for this? Because I I have my answer. Oh, yeah, but... I, it's like a six party answer. Go ahead. Then. Okay. Let's start it off. We can like go back and forth. Okay. Okay. So first off, hooking up with someone at work, big old X. Because I feel like in any way, there's no good outcome. You know, because either one, you guys end up being together, but you work together. It's a super awkward. You get like no alone time because you'll live together, dating each other, and working together. So yeah. Like, like if you're no in the same time. office, like yikers. You get no, like, and it's a whole HR problem, like, having to sign documents about, like, sexual harassment claims in the future, in case something goes wrong, etc. So, I feel like, just working with someone is not, not, like, the best choice. And if it goes badly, you see them every single day, and you're reminded of that pain. So, I feel like just working with someone, I feel like just try to avoid it as much as you can. Unless you're kind of leaving soon, then it's, like, a whole other thing. So, that's, like, that's, like, problem number one. Um, two, she said, after he goes to me, come back for a millionth time, she said she was done props to you because i feel like the hardest thing to do is like when you do meet someone and they treat you so poorly or they're so toxic and you keep coming back it is so hard to end that cycle so the fact that you got to that cycle is like a very very good point for you like i commend you so much but think about this is that you've made so much progress so far do not go back on it and i think by even entertaining him the idea of him talking to him texting him replying not only knowing you've made progress, but also they has another girl. They has a girlfriend now. I feel like you're only setting yourself up to be hurt or to hurt someone else. Because if you were that girl, like how would you feel if you knew your boyfriend was talking to someone that he used to like hook up with? Yeah, like I feel like if I was that girl, like even though obviously it might cause tension between you and him at work, which is like as much, it's a lot easier for us to sit here and say. But at the same time, like if you were that girl how hard would it be for you to sit here and be like, oh, he's fighting with this girl at work or like even be ignorant to something like that. Like when you want to know, just like, no, you know, like just shoot her a DM and be like, here, 
What you boy is the worst. <laughs> yeah. So I say one, I wouldn't say tell them to fuck off. I would simply like say it in the most plain terms that you're not comfortable with like how he's communicating with you. That you one, have a boyfriend or talking to someone new. Two, he has a girlfriend. And three, that you don't want to be uncomfortable at work. I think there's a difference between being cordial and being like just too much when like trying to like flirt and stuff. So when you do see him in person, I would say be cordial, be willing to be like, hi, how are you? And move on with your day. Don't entertain anything else. That's my advice for you. That's exactly what I was going to say, basically. Because I feel like, for me, just like with my personality, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, getting a compliment, receiving compliments. I'm a Leo. So I'd be like, oh my God, thank you. But at the same time, you have history with this person, so it's a lot more complicated than some creepy guy just coming up to you at work. Like, it's so much more complicated than that. And because of that, I completely agree with Sydney if you know you see him don't like ignore him or be like oh my god yeah fuck you but just be like hey blah 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 meet him at the water water cooler and then like go back to your desk and literally ignore him you know i'm thinking of like the office (laughs) but like i just think that it doesn't mean anything more than that yeah we love new york sirens we do we do we do so yeah i say like put him in his place and keep it cordial is how like i would concise all that advice into two seconds I don't even think it needs to be a conversation. Exactly what Sydney said. Just put it in the plainest terms possible. Don't be rude. Because then, like, you know, he might have ammunition to, like, go further or do something else or might instigate him. You never know how men are. But also, just plainest terms and move on with your life. Okay, question number two. That was four. Two. Two. Okay. Whoa, whoa. They said, I'm thinking of coming to New York City to college. Or for college, I'm assuming. But I'm not 100% sure. I wanted to know what were the things that made you want to go to school in the city? It's a long Okay. We can like make like a list of ex- like four things you need like, when you go to school. Let's go back and forth and each say four things and okay. make them like semi succinct. Yeah. So I was from this. Oh, you're going to go first. No, you go first. Because <laughs> you're from the South. So you're, yeah. you're going first would actually be best. I went to school in the South and I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> and I wanted to be as far away as I could. And that was either New York or California. And I applied to schools in both and just fall, fell in love with NYU. My yes. first thing was I wanted to be involved in the musical theater Broadway aspects of things because I was musical theater for 18 years of my life. And even though I'm not right now and I wasn't for like the last three years of high school, that's like the main, I wanted to go to NYU since I was like four years old. And that's like the main reason why. Um, also coming again for the South, I went to like a PWI, which I don't know what that means, probably white institution. So I wanted to go to school that was a lot more diverse, not just because I wanted to like find a community of like people that looked like me or had my experiences, but to gain new experiences as well. So like people of different races, different backgrounds, international, et cetera. And NYU was like the best for that. So it's like such a diverse campus, a diverse student body. And my number two is along that same tune for sure because my dad is in the military. So I lived in like several countries growing up and one of those being like Belgium, like the US, like whatever, whatever it may be. And I really wanted to continue that kind of like open-mindedness and like just being around not one what is it homogenous or heterogeneous homogenous right? homogenous yeah i didn't want to be around a homogenous group right is yeah. that how it is yeah. i didn't want to be around a homogenous group of people so i wanted to keep broadening my horizons and um meeting people from new walks of life yeah um i think also just because i'm a very independent person and i think being in new york city forced you to be an adult a lot sooner than you would at like a college campus that is like a state school for example because like we do have a campus which i hate people say we don't have one we have a, like yeah. a very like area that's nyu only but because your dorms or your friends or whatever might like be commuting or you might be outside of that little square you're kind of forced to learn or to experience new parts of the city and kind of be on your own and for me that's like a lot more of a seamless transition from being like a high schooler to being an adult so I loved just, like, being forced to be on my own and explore things and meet new people and new experiences. So, like, for me, that was, like, the, one of the biggest, like, selling points. Number three for me is that I get bored really easily. So I lived in the suburb before this, and I would literally sit in my room on a Saturday night and be like, so moving to New York City, there's always just something to do around every corner, especially a, a school as exciting as NYU. I feel like it perfectly fit my personality. It perfectly fit my extrovertness. So that's like the main selling point of why I chose NYU for sure. You said extrovert. I was literally like introvert, extrovertness. Yes. Yes. Vocabulary. Let's go. Yeah. Speaking of words that don't make sense, (laughs) I was trying to think of the word for the noun form of prepare. (laughs) And I was like, preference. And then, like, never once did the word preparation, like, pass my mind. I was like, no, it's definitely preference. <laughs> yeah, just... This has been an 
ongoing joke with us for like three days. I think it's hilarious. Preference. Preference. That could be a word someday. We'll see. Okay, it watch sounds it. better than preparation. Watch Preference. it join the dictionary. I'm a, I'm a sue for, uh, that's my Copyright. word. Copyright. Merriam Webster. Clean your guns. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> okay. Um, fourth thing, last thing. Um, I think one in terms of like career is that I was very interested in doing two things. One was politics, one was media entertainment. And I felt like not only did NYU have like the perfect degree set up for me where I could do like both of those in one degree and also get a minor in whatever I wanted. I think the programs are so unique that I could like fulfill that without having to like go way out of my like way to find out ways to do that. And also in terms of careers and internships, the options are like bountiful. I feel like in smaller cities, it's hard to get an internship in your preferred career because like opportunities are so like small. So in terms of like building networks and relationships with people, I feel like New York was a perfect place for that. And NYU was helped with that with like their system, handshake, whatever it's called, Wasserman, mm. of finding you jobs and finding connections with alumni. I loved that. And so for me, that was like the last selling point for me. And the last selling point for me <laughs> was the food. Because, and this is very specific, like, uh, for my TikTok right now, for example, the main thing I do right now is try to get sponsorships for food and for restaurants in particular, just because, like, I love the diverse, not only the diversity, but, like, the quality of food in New York City and in big cities across America in general, I feel like, is so much better than the suburbs. Like, in my hometown, we probably have, like, a pizza joint, barbecue joint that gives you food poisoning, and then, like, one sushi place and joint. one milkshake place joint <laughs> is, they all give you food poisoning regardless at the end of the day you're on the toilet so coming to new york city i think was such an extraordinary experience because i can go to the same restaurant and get like oysters which you hate but that's okay we're working on it yeah. oysters and then like filet mignon for dinner and then banana pudding for dessert <laughs> an experience like that is what i missed not only the diversity of food but the quality of food for sure in new york city is unbeatable in my opinion I feel like we're both altos. Like, we both have deep voices, but yours is, like, a high deep, mine's a low deep. How did that make perfect sense? Because mine's, like, yours like a high higher deep. register, but, like, I also have a lot of vocal fry. And yours is, like... Ugh. I literally talk like I'm just, <laughs> like I don't smoke. I've never smoked, so I don't know why my voice is like this. I've smoked, so that's why this yeah. is scary. I think my dad has a very deep voice, and, like, I just inherited that. It was getting deeper. Yeah. I just inherited that. Deep voice. <laughs> okay. Even when I try to make my voice deep, my register is higher. Hey, oh. I'm talking like this first episode. Okay. <laughs> so question number three, I think, or four, three. three. Okay. Three. So I've been a part of a friend group for such a long time, but I'm at the point where I've outgrown them all. It's not really there for me. It can be kind of toxic sometimes. But I'm scared to leave them because I have no one else. I don't know how to make new friends, especially during COVID and being in high school. What should I do? Aww. Girl, yeah. I feel you. I um, love you so much. I'm not, that's such a hard predicament, especially yeah. in high school. Especially in high school, especially during COVID. Like, I can't imagine doing high school on Zoom. <sighs> Having, okay, we have what? One or two classes a day in college over Zoom for like an hour or, and 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, an hour and 15 minutes. I was just about to say. We that. used to do like 7 30 to 3 30 straight classes and be chilling and then do sports and theater and dance. So I don't know how y'all do over Zoom. Like, kudos to you. Um, I think it's a two prong answer one dealing with friends and one doing how to meet new people. Um, do you want to go first? What me too? I can go first. What was the first one? How did what did you say? Their two pronged answer. What was the first prong? Yeah, just like dealing with like toxic friends, not growing people, oh, and making new friends. I think the first aspect you have to gain in any situation like this, whatsoever, whether it's a guy or a group of friends or your parents, is find a support system somewhere. Like just make sure, and I don't want to say a backup because it's not a backup, but make sure that you have like some sort of support system where you know that you can go to someone else to talk to about it, whether it's a school counselor, a therapist, a parent, another friend, a cousin, family member, like something like that, because you can't just drop, and I'm serious, no matter how toxic someone is, you can't just drop an entire group of friends and not have anyone there for you because your your life is going to fall apart, especially in high school, because it's not like you can just go out to a bar and make new friends if you're underage, you know? So I think like the first thing, <laughs> this my first thing. alcohol, no. <laughs> my first thing is like, just make sure you have a support system intact and then try to proceed from there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think that one thing that feels like the end of the world in high school losing friends once you like hit the point in adulthood where like you realize like where life is going it doesn't hurt as much anymore because why am i talking like i'm really dr phil because you are dr phil <laughs> <laughs> she's dr phil to me dr. i could have heard all my problems um 
So, like, it's something we've all dealt with. you say Dr. Phillips? Dr. Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, one, we've all been there. And I yeah. think, like, see, for, for me, me in high school, like, I had a very large group of friends. Just because our school was so small, that was, like, half the grade of girls. And, like, not all of us got along, obviously. It's, like, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> but um, senior year, I think, I didn't even necessarily branch out. I think I was just a little bit more social and finding friends in my classes because like college was coming soon. I wanted to make new, like, new connections with people before I left. And I found so many small groups of friends in just my classes that I ended up like having these like long, lifelong friendships with because we just bonded in that small space of time. And um, it's like, it's obviously hard to lose friends. But one thing that Sarah, like I've talked to like a lot of people about we've like all been through is that like sometimes when you lose friends it's not a bad thing like it hurts those people in your life obviously but like my whole motto has been quality over quantity like i rather have one or two or three really really great friends who are there for me and support me and love me who i would do the same for whereas a very reciprocal give and take relationship than friends who i feel like are just really really toxic and only bring like negativity into my life and like it must it hurts obviously when you lose them at first but like honestly just feels like shedding dead weight like after losing all that negativity and just like toxicness out of your life you you do feel peace and it feels so nice because like obviously it hurts at first but like when you look back at memories and you think i'm so much better now that i don't have that like pain in my life you're gonna feel so much better and it might be lonely for a week or two but i promise you naturally you will find someone else who has interest in you or is there for to support you etc so even with like you're in high school college is coming soon you'll meet a whole new group of people and like life will be so different so i feel like don't stay with someone who think that they're like you need a group of friends i think it's much more like beneficial to be healthy you know dick all the toxic toxic toxicity <laughs> all <laughs> of that toxicity out of your life all the negativity and just like shed it aside and have peace and freedom to like explore you explore new yous and you've outgrown people there's nothing wrong with that it's a natural part of life and in a month or so it will feel like new you new year new me. also in terms of how you proceed i feel like there's um if you if you if there wasn't like a blowout fight in which you all ended i think that there's a very cordial way that you can go about approaching this for sure you know like i think you can try to distance yourself as much as humanly possible try to make more friends and if your old friends ever come back and be like what went wrong or like why are you being distant or why are you being weird you can literally just be like i, I honestly respect you as people but i just don't think that and, and just be honest you know what i mean like and let them know that it doesn't have anything to do with them as people. It just has a lot to do with you and, like, how you are maturing in your own life. You know, maybe don't say the word maturing because that implies they're immature. But you know what I mean, especially in high school. Because I feel like in my high school, there were only 100 people in my grade. So telling someone that they're immature would be like, oh, my God, Sarah said that Kelsey is immature. But there's a way. You know, you can figure yeah, it out for you sure. Have, you outgrow people. It's, like, not necessarily a bad thing at all. Yeah um and making new friends i don't know how high school works right now on zoom yeah but i feel like joining clubs it sounds so cliche but like e people it's all interest based so like joining clubs after school activities whether it's dance cheerleading soccer football theater paint club like people that have similar interest to you and then also just like take it might suck to take the extra step to be like hey want to grab lunch someday or like hey want to hang out someday it seems awkward but like that could be a lifelong friendship there from like one second of courage you know so i say just go for it exactly and this is the last question probably of this mini sode but this is a good one i'm gonna read the whole thing it's gonna be very dramatic mm -hmm. um i'm in a small friendship group only four of us girls and now one of the other three has become really close with another girl and invites her every time we go out which is fine we get that she wants to be there but the problem is that now she refuses to come to any of our meetups for example, sleepovers if this other girl isn't invited because she feels as if she'll be left out even though the girl has other friends which she meet up with which she meets up with regularly and doesn't invite her. Us three girls in the group feel the same way and we have brought this up but every time we do she gets really defensive about it and she says we are getting annoyed at her for being a nice person and not wanting someone to be left out which we understand but it's gone to a bit of an extreme. How do you think we should handle the situation? This is all pre-lockdown by the way so someone's not going out and partying. She made a little disclaimer. Love your podcast. First of all, thank, oh, you. thank you. We love you. And you can take this one if you want. Okay. Um, I honestly, like, my whole thing is that honesty is the best, like, policy. 
policy. I was like, quality. <laughs> no, I speak I English. Best quality. <laughs> um, it's the best thing you can do. Because, like, you said that you guys have, like, talked to her before. But I think, think of it from her perspective. is like, if you have three of your best friends, like, kind of cornering you about one subject, it's kind of like, I feel kind of attacked right now. Yeah. So I think uh, approach it in more of, like, a cordial way. And just say that, like, hey, we love this girl. We love hanging out with her. But we miss the dynamic which we just asked for. And I would love if, of course, we still hang out with this girl, but sometimes we reserve time where it's just us for to like build on this friendship and enjoy each other's company and say, we're not asking to just exclude her at all, neither all the time, but there should be times where we can have like just a small get together with us for, like, we'd love to do that. And if she gets defensive, just say like, we're not trying to attack you or corner you or anything like that. We're just saying that we miss having us four around, you know, and that girl does have other friends she hangs out with. So it's not really excluding anyone, but you miss having just you four around, you know, and you can't be ashamed of that or like embarrassed by that or like reprimanded for that. Why did you shake my finger like that? Reprimanded. reprimanded. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it also accompanied with like a country accent. Yeah, reprimanded. reprimanded. <laughs> um, I would say just be honest. Just tell yeah. her how you feel. Approach it in the most like non confrontational way you can, and I think you'll be able to, you'll be able to solve it. I think for sure, especially since it's one other person. It like gets like one other person separate from your group. It gets a little icky just because it's like. And also, you know, we don't know how small your school is and we don't really know exactly your situation quantity wise. But at the same time, like it just because it is one other person and she does have a lot of other friends to hang out with, just make it very clear to your one friend that like as much as we love this other person, exactly what Sydney just said, we were together long before this other person came along. And I think like time has a lot to do with stuff because there's the, there's the uh, what's it like quality of roots and like the there's that aspect of having like a long-term friendship over just someone you know just like entering the equation which isn't like a bad thing and obviously like she may in 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 enter the friend group in a way that you for like as you, like four might become five but i think right now just because this one girl has other friends that she hangs out with and she also has just recently been acquainted with everybody in the group i think that it is perfectly fair to ask for time for just the four of you and i don't think it's excluding anyone especially for example if you make sure or know that she's hanging out with her other friends one night for example i'm not saying like be crazy and do some fbi work but if you know that she's hanging out with her other friends and if you make it very clear to your friends you're not trying to exclude her and that you'll invite her next time like promise that there will be another time set a date where you'll invite her just be like let's all go to pf chang's tonight and like have a mojito <laughs> Why P.F. Chang? I don't know, because I felt it. <laughs> I, I, I do feel that. Big, big broccoli. You like P.F. Chang? Yeah. Beef and broccoli. Mongolian beef. I'm going to try the Mongolian beef. Mmm. Plans. Love it. When are we going to do the Yeah. Maybe P.F. Chang's in New York. You want to miss CPK. California Pizza Kitchen. I love California Pizza Kitchen. Yeah, I get, I get the kids off right over $6 in half of a butter cake. Why did I? Why did I? Butter cake. Butter cake is so good. CPK in Times Square. It would be in Times Square. It I'll would. actually look into that. I love Olive Garden, cake. CPK, PF Chang's would probably be in Times Square too. Cause it's Cheesecake Chang. Factory. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're done. You can do the outro because I did it for the main. I did the intro though. For this episode. You're right. Guys! <laughs> 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 no one's here. Guys! <laughs> So, <laughs> so if you listen to our last episode, you'll know that if you search us up on YouTube, that Crying on Public podcast, we're not the first thing that comes up. It's so we're the second thing that comes up. So if you look us up on YouTube, just at Crying in Public, because that's just our username, Crying in Public, or the second thing that comes up. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify, Apple Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeart, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on TikTok at Crying in Public Podcast and on Instagram at Crying in Public Podcast. So make sure to go follow us on everything. We post exclusive content on all of those platforms. And we love you so much. And we hope you have a great night. Slash morning. Slash day. Bye. We know that song and she goes, is like, Wait, wait. Alana Nita, Alana Nita, Alana Nita. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Oh, <laughs> what's your singing? So, <laughs> so, gosh, I'm the words right. Okay. Um, la, 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 la. So bye. Ch 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 love.